What's going on everyone, Boone here from premiumbeat.com. So today I want to talk to you about the trim pass animator inside of Adobe After Effects. Now if you're new to After Effects, you might not be aware of this tool because it's kind of hidden away under a submenu of the shape layers. I'm going to open up the program, show you how we can use this tool, and more specifically, I'm going to show you how we can use it on five different projects. Okay, so my first example, let's take a look at how we can create a dynamic and customizable infographic. So here I have a simple project. This is just two basic text elements. We have this big number up here and then we have the text down here that says data visualization. Now I wanna create just a basic simple bar graph that animates on that I can control and it will correlate to this number here. So how we can do that is I'm gonna go over and grab the pen tool and set the stroke to something very high like 250 set it to white with no fill and now i'm going to quickly draw this here and there we go now we've got it looks like a little bar graph now i'm going to go here rename it bar graph now all i need to do is open this up go to add trim paths and when i open up the trim paths properties here I can simply go to this end attribute and let's say we want a one second animation. So I'm gonna go over here to one second. I'm gonna to toggle that keyframe on there and then I'm gonna go back and send this to zero. So now we have a bar graph that's animating on. Let's quickly keyframe this. Uh, set the easy ease there. Maybe make it a little more smooth. But we wanna connect this bar graph to our number. So actually that can be done quite easily. I'm going to just go over to this text here, the number, open that up and go to source text. And there is a little property pick whip here. And if you don't have the latest version of After Effects, you can alt click and see that. So I'm going to drag this to the end. And that's going to give us the readout of um, where exactly that's at. But the problem is, it's these crazy decimal numbers. So what I want to do, last step is hold alt, hit the end property. And then I'm going to go to the expression menu and just add a quick little JavaScript math that says round out that value right here, math.round value. I'm going to click that. When I click off, now we see we have this dynamic infographic and however, you know, whatever number I plug into my end attribute here, that's how far it'll go. So if, let's say I only want it to go to 75, then it's going to go to 75 and that bar graph will indeed reflect that amount. Very, very cool. Another really cool example, and probably my favorite example of how to use trim paths is to create animated map routes. So let me show you what we got going on here. I have a simple map graphic. I'm gonna go over and grab the pen tool, set the stroke to eight, um, and I turn the fill off. Now, all I need to do is go and click on my map here. Let's say we wanna go, we wanna start in California, go to Spain, and then head on down to Australia. Now, I'm gonna rename this uh, route and then I'm going to open this up and we can do a, a little bit of customization here under the shape I'll open up the stroke and here I can customize the look of my route just some subtle changes I can change it to a round cap I can add some dashes and maybe customize those dashes and now it's as simple as adding that trim paths and then once again animating that in position so if I want my route to animate on over the course of like a second and a half, I'll go out here, add my end keyframe at 100%, and I'll go back to the beginning and change it to zero. And voila, I have my animated route now. Okay, and for this example, I'm creating a little basic lower third. And right now I have it animating on character by character, but I want to add something, you know, a little more to it. So what I can do is I can go grab the rectangle tool and I'm going to set the stroke and uh, no fill and I'll, let's set the stroke to like 10 pixels now I'm going to quickly draw a rectangle around my text then I'm going to go to the align panel and make sure it's aligned perfectly and we can you know kind of adjust this to exactly how we want it and I'll rename it uh, text box and that look, that's looking pretty good, but you know, to bring that to life, I'll add the good old trim paths. And now I'm gonna open this up, and let's say we wanted to add, animate on over the course of a second. I'll add in keyframe, and I'll go back, add zero. 
So there it animates on there. Let me go ahead and easy ease this. But, you know, I want it to do something a little more than just animate on like that. So I can animate this offset as well. So let's set the offset to end at zero and to begin at like 90 degrees. And then I'll easy ease these as well. And now let's take a look at what we got. Okay, and just like that, we've added another cool little dynamic element to our lower third. Okay, another really fun project to use with trim paths is to animate the stroke of a text element. So how can we do that? Well, first I'm gonna grab my text element and I'm gonna go to layer, create, create shapes from text. I'm gonna click that. And now we have this shape layer and it's turned off our original text element. If I open this up and open up contents, you can see that each individual uh, character or letter has been turned into a shape element. So what I wanna do is I just wanna select the entire layer I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the fill and I'm gonna turn on the stroke to a solid color and we'll set the stroke to, let's just do four. Okay, that's looking good. Now what I can do, let's close that. I'm gonna go ahead and click add trim paths and it adds, throws the trim paths down at the bottom which is perfect because that's gonna be affecting everything above it. And now we can immediately get a look. Oh, I'm gonna undo that. Let's go to one second add our end keyframe, go to the beginning, go back to zero, and now we can see this kind of interesting look here. And if I, you know, kind of easy ease this, it's a pretty cool, interesting look. I can animate it in that way, animate it out that way. I can also change this trim multiple shapes because we have, you know, each individual letter here. I can change it to individual, and now it's going to animate those on one at a time, if I kind of stretch that out, because it's quite fast. Kind of cool. Let me turn that back to simultaneous. I'll show you one other thing we can do. I could go ahead and turn all these keyframes off and bring the end down to 50. Or actually, let's bring it to like 70, maybe. And then I could just animate that offset. So we could bring it to the beginning here, set a keyframe for offset, and then bring it over to one and then now that is just going to do this like looping kind of look pretty interesting for my last example here i'm going to be creating some circle burst elements now these really are great to help visualize movements for other elements such as shape layers or text elements and they don't have to be in the shape of a circle obviously if you're using these on text you know you can have just a few shooting off of one side so what i'm going to do here let's take a look here i have a star element that animates in and it kind of zooms in really quick this like snap zoom so to help you know visualize that movement I want to add a circle burst right when it zooms you know right when it hits its final scaling position which is right here so I'm gonna add a quick marker so I can know that I'll add I'll start my circle burst there and what I want to do now is I'm gonna be using the pen tool set my stroke to 4 turn the fill off and I'm going to be using a repeater as well. So just so that the repeater doesn't act up, I'm going to use some guides. So I'm going to turn on these guides, turn on my title action safe, and then I'm going to go and draw this line right above, right here. And there we go. And then I'm going to just trim the head of this clip to my marker so it starts here. Okay, so let me turn these guides back off and zoom back out. Okay, so now I've got this here. Now what I wanna do, I'll rename this layer burst. I'm gonna open it up. Now first I'm gonna add a repeater. So go to add, select repeater, and now I'm gonna open up the repeater options. And I'm gonna set this repeater to nine. Now if you don't follow my instructions here specifically, you can end up with some wonky looks that, that are not working perfectly when you go to rotate it. So um, I'm using kind of mathematical calculations here that equal, you know, divide by 360. So, you know, if you want a different look, you can play around with it. But if you're trying to follow along with this specifically, try to use the same exact numbers that I'm putting in here. Otherwise, you're going to get a weird look. Now I'm going to turn my position down to zero. And now I'm gonna set the rotation of the repeater transform options to 40. 
And now we have these perfectly kind of spaced out here. So I'll close this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to add uh, the trim paths. I'm going to open up my trim path and let's just go and say we want this to be half a second. So scroll to right here. And now what I need to do is I'm going to set keyframes for both start and end. And I'm going to make sure that both of them are set at 100%. Then I'm going to go back to my marker and set them both to zero. And now if we look at it, nothing's happening. That's because that's not the right settings. So what I need to do is I need to offset them a little bit. So I'm going to grab my end. I'm going to offset that a little bit. And now if we look at it, we can see that these are now bursting a little bit. So now I'm going to easy ease these. And the key here is kind of make, um, you know, your curves a little bit different so that, you know, it'll give you, let's try this here. Okay, the burst is looking good, but the timing is just not good at all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shorten this and then I'm gonna actually, let's just move this. Let me hit the U key so we can just see the keyframes. Let me move this back, start this a little bit earlier before our marker. Okay, now let's watch this. And you know, I can spend a lot more time customizing this, um, which you can do with all of these examples. You know, I was kind of, you know, sped through this, but spend some time and you can get some really cool looks using these trim paths. So I'm gonna go ahead and just shorten this a little bit. Now let's have a look. Super cool. All right, so there you have it. Five different ways you can use trim paths inside of Adobe After Effects. Hopefully this got you inspired, get your wheels turning, thinking about how you can use this cool tool on your next project. Now, if you liked the video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the Premium Beat channel. We've got a bunch of cool tutorials coming out in the future. And if you need music for your next project, be sure to head over to premiumbeat.com. Ton of cool stuff, whatever genre you're looking for, whatever mood you're looking for, we've got it all.